What is up, folks? I am Kevin Ioli, and it is my pleasure to welcome to my channel the former UFC champion. I think she's what a two-time former champion. She has been around a long time. And on Saturday at uh, UFC Vegas 89, she will be facing Amanda Hebus. Of course, I'm talking about Rose Namajunas. Rose, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Nice to see you. It is good to see you as well. Um, you know, it's funny. The UFC last year celebrates their 30th anniversary, and this year you're celebrating your 10th anniversary in the UFC. So yeah. I wasn't kidding when I said you were around a long time. That's almost a third of the time uh, the, of the UFC's existence that you've been in the organization. Does it feel yeah. like that long that you've been around that long? Man, um, kind of, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it does, and then sometimes it's just like, but I know in comparison to like, when everything is said and done, it's going to be like, man, that was just, oh, it was just like a blip in time, you know? And so um, everything's all relative, but I, I really am like truly grateful for every time that I get to step in there and perform. It's, it's a true bless blessing for sure. When did you first have in mind, uh, hey, I want to be a professional fighter? Like, when did it hit you and when did you decide I'm going to work toward that goal? Yeah. Um, I would say I was, I was, uh, I don't know, maybe I was like 18 years old or something like that. I was, uh, I, I was getting ready to like, kind of like in that stage. Of, I mean, I would say like the entire entirety of like my childhood, I, I knew I wanted to like do, I knew I needed to, um, figure something out because I didn't like, I didn't like seeing my mom struggle or, you know what I mean? Things like that. So I was just like, man, I, I know I need to, um, I, I always knew the importance of, um, making money and, and being able to provide for myself and not depend on anybody else. So, um, that was always a driving factor. And, and once I, I, I was trying to think of all different avenues that I could do. And while in the midst of always being a martial artist, and when I seen people, you know, making mixed martial arts a profession, even though it was like early on, um, and there wasn't a lot of women, I still felt like, Oh, that's probably something I can do because I mean, I'm one, I'm just really great at it. I'm a great athlete. Um, but two, um, I just seen that there's a potential opportunity that it could be something bigger. Um, so even though maybe the opportunities wasn't great at the time, I just felt like I could make those opportunities present themselves. How much were you a product of your environment where you grew up, you know, kind of you when you went to high school, I guess, you you know, your high school wasn't necessarily the, you know, uh, the easiest high school to attend. Right. You had a you know, tough school, with some tough kids around. Did that influence <laughs> you? Did that have an impact on you? Like the fact that you had to be tough and, you know, to, to grow up where you did and do what you did? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I've always man, just uh, yeah, some of the especially like the the neighborhood in which you know, the high school that I went to, uh, it was like super, um, like, like crazy vibes there because, you know, like it was just in a bad neighborhood and, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer lived there and it was just, oh, it was just like, a, uh, yeah, it was a, it definitely like always, it, it, it got me really in touch with my instinctual side, always being ready to karate chop somebody, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and be able to just take off in a sprint. Um, you know, definitely it wasn't just like, oh, I go to school and focus on school. It was like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm also like ready to, to, like I said, take off and sprint, learn not to go down alleys. You're not supposed to go down, you know, things like that. <laughs> what, what impacted growing up that way? Like, did it impact your, your life, your, you know, your childhood? Do you feel like you missed anything growing up that way where you said, you know, you kind of have your head on a swivel, right? Did do yeah. you feel like you missed the things that like, you know, suburbia kids, you know, maybe you grew up with and are used to? Um, I, you know, I definitely, I think we all have, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out and things like that on things, but yeah. So there, there, I mean, I definitely, mm, yeah. Like, when it comes to like movies and people recalling like, Oh, you seen this movie? I'm like, no, nope, cause I was busy at practice or I was doing something, you know? Right. <laughs> so I definitely, um, even though I definitely had a lot of um, play time and social time, it just, you know, I think there, there was also like most of the time I was just like, okay, how can I, how can I scheme? How can I, <laughs> how can I get myself, you know, prepared for the future? So yeah, I did, I did miss out on certain things, but I, I wouldn't have traded it for anything because I don't know. It's just, it's made me what I am today. And I, 
I'm very proud of what I've been able to do for myself and my family. And, yeah. and um, it is a lot of pressure sometimes, you know, because like, I do feel like sometimes I, you know, a, a lot of people depend on me, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, I, I love it. And I, it is, it's nothing, n nothing is more satisfying other than like, you know, getting that belt around your waist, like in the, on the flip side, like being able to take care of my 86 year old grandmother, who's, you know, Lithuanian, who, you know, struggled her whole life, be able to take care of her, you know, take care of my mom and my brother and, you know what I mean? Just all around. It's, it's an amazing blessing. So, so it's all worth it. When you, you know, you, you referenced the pressure and I'm just kind of curious, do you carry that with you? Like, you know, to the gym and things like that, like where, you know, maybe I don't feel like going today and some other fighter might just say, you know what, my body needs a day off. Do you push through and do it anyways? Because, you know, you have these folks over here that rely on you and rely on the paycheck that you're going to get from from fighting. Yeah. Um, You know, I guess it depends on what my body's physically feeling like, you know, that that's like a whole other thing that you have to learn as an athlete is being able to determine the days that you're supposed to push through and not push through um or pull it back i should say um but ultimately like it all goes back to you know um checking in with you know my relationship with god and just you know anytime my burden it seems heavy you know jesus said my yoke is light and so i just and and you know we we're called to carry our cross so you know, if he can do that, then I can, you know, do my little things that I think are hard, you know what I mean? And so it just kind of helps me, helps push me through the days that I, I want to feel sorry for myself or whatever. And it's like, you know, puts into perspective because it's like, you know, yeah, it's, we're actually all very blessed and it's just, you know, sometimes it takes that little switch to like, okay, you know, it's, it's all right. I should be grateful for challenges. I should be grateful to, to, you know, carry my cross, my burden, you know, and, and just, and just trying to make it, trying to make it fun and, and as um, enjoyable as possible. You know, turn into the fight. I mean, I think, you know, you're in an interesting situation. I mean, obviously this is the biggest fight of her career fighting you, you know, former champion for, you know, you are kind of a bellwether for her, a measuring stick, that type of thing. Right. I don't want to say mm -hmm. that word, you know, uh, they might be out there, but a stepping stone, but you know, that that's, you know, for her to get where she wants to go, you're, you're in the way, but for you, it's a big fight too, you know, coming off a couple of losses, right. And you know, the, the division is starting to, you know, change a little bit. Uh, how, how much pressure do you feel to perform and to, to be thug grows and be the one that, you know, had that dramatic knockout of uh, Wiley and all those things. Yeah. Um, I genu genuinely just, really want to put on a good performance. I know that, you know, that's all, that's all just whether it's, you know, God's will for that to happen. And I know that it's all possible because like when I first, um, when I first knocked out Joanna, when I did that, I was like, Oh, that probably will never happen again. Like that feeling that, that yeah. magical feeling or whatever. And, and then it happened again. And not only that, it happened even a better fashion. And so I just, I know anything's possible and I know that it just, but it also, it's not like at a snap of fingers, it just kind of, it has to happen organically and it has to happen naturally. So um, I put all in like all the work that I, you know, could do. And I'm really proud of myself for, for the preparation. And I just kind of have to be content with that. And I know that the result is, you know, is, is out of my control, but I can just show up and I can just, you know, do what I do best. And I know that this is, what I'm designed to do. I'm, I ha truly have a great gift. And I, and I always said like, you know, in the past, I'm, I'm grateful and blessed. I'm blessed. And when I do my best, I am the best. And I still believe that I, mm -hmm. you know, I had some, I had some, uh, little stumbling blocks myself, uh, you know, this last like couple of fights and whatnot. Um, and just in life, like definitely been a lot of, uh, obstacles to overcome, but, um, I'm, yeah, I, I still believe that I am the best when I do my best. And this time there's, um, yeah, I, I just feel like all of those things were needed to happen in order for me to get to this point that I'm at right now. And it's going to really um, be great fuel for me in this fight. And I, I believe that I will get the victory and get my hand raised. And I also believe that I'm very, if, if anybody, you know, if anybody can be, to a division champion next, I, I believe it's myself. And so that's, that's really what I'm going for. And it's kind of my, you know, sort of, I guess, last accomplishment that I really would like for me personally in my career, like, 
you know, I know that we're prize fighters and we, you know, we, we, this is our job and our profession and finances are important, but, but I really, what drives me in my spirit is, you know, getting those accomplishments and the, you know, that, 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 uh, that resume on my, and to, to be able to be up there with all the greatest, very few get to say that they've been, you know, champion or two-time champion, like very, even fewer get to say that they're two division champion. And so right. if I can do that, that would be, you know, I could, I could definitely be <laughs> happy with my life for sure. Very cool. Well, I think you'd be happy yeah. with it no matter what, but that obviously yeah. <laughs> a lot better with the win there. But, you know, that, that, so that leads me to an interesting question. So, you know, People talk, you see the, you know, record, you know, you have two losses in the last two fights, but I wonder, do you just like fans sometimes, you know, do you have to remind yourself the great thing about mixed martial arts is anybody can win at any time, but also the great thing about mixed martial arts is anybody can lose at any time. So as you yeah. kind of, you know, I, the, you know, the flyaway championship and maybe moving up and, and making history uh, in, in women's sports, um, do you have to remember that? Like, you know, Hey, just because I lost, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm no longer capable of, of doing this. Right. Yeah. That, you know, you're, you're, uh, the, the self doubt definitely tries to creep in when, uh, things don't go your way, but I do sometimes things don't go your way, way, not just, not because of, you know, you're incapable is because, you know, that's just what has been intended for your path, you know, and, mm -hmm. and for, for other reasons that we might not know, like maybe we're being protected from something, maybe, you know, this opportunity, this door needed to close. So this other one needs to be open, you know what I mean? And so I, I truly believe in that. And um, I mean, there was definitely some things that, that I, you know, maybe drop the ball on um, and it's definitely my responsibility, but I also feel like, that was just part of my destiny and my path um, because it just, it, uh, it really shaped certain decisions that I made going forward. And so that does, that would have never happened had I won, you know? And so um, I'm very thankful for that. And um, it sucks that I had to lose to learn certain lessons, but I'm also very grateful for that. And, um, and yeah, but, but it definitely, sometimes I do, you know, it's like, oh, do I still got it? Am I, you yeah. know what I mean? Am I, oh, am I all washed up rose now? <laughs> you know, things like that, of course. Like, but I just, um, you know, we call those ants, those always negative thoughts. You just squash them, you know, and you're like, you know what? I still, I still have that. When I do my best, I am the best, that little still voice inside of me that says that. And so I, I still feel it and I still believe it. And I'm, I'm, I'm going off of that. So, so yeah, we're, we're trucking forward regardless. That's awesome. And before I let you go, and I, I appreciate your time greatly. Um, you know, what about Amanda? Like, where do you see her, you know, biggest threat to you? And, you know, she is very confident, you know, she's predicting a knockout. I'm sure you've seen that on social media. I, I asked her earlier today how she saw the fight going and she, she's very specifically picked a third round knockout. Um, you know, oh, okay. That's interesting. Cause I saw a first round knockout uh, when, when she, she, I watched uh, the journey or something. She said first round. Or, or she didn't say knockout, but she was like, "Oh, first round." So I don't know. She, I think she's just, I don't know where where you got that from, but she might be all over the place right now. <laughs> yeah. So, so she's picking it. She's picking a win by knockout, which I guess everybody's okay. got to be confident. But do you sometimes wonder, like a, a fighter like her, while she's fought good opposition, she hasn't fought at that championship level like you had. And do you sometimes take those kind of predictions as like somebody whistling past the graveyard? Right. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not worried. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what it is. I, what I think is, um, I think that she experienced, you know, uh, cause just from what she had said about her last fight being, uh, she, she, you know, picked, uh, she, she envisioned, you know, her, the result being the way that it was. And so I think she is understanding the, the importance or the, the power of visualization and things like that. So I think she's just like, okay, if I did that, then, then if I just pick this or whatever, then this is, and it's always going to happen that way. And I already have, you know, done that plenty of times. <laughs> and, uh, and so, but it, it doesn't always work like that. And mm -hmm. um, it, it might work out, you know, most of the time, but, uh, but I do, I, I just, um, you know, I like that level of confidence that she has, because when I beat her, it's just going to be that much more, you know, satisfying. And I know she's going to bring it. And I know she's, 
you know, ready uh, to, to go to battle. And that's what I like about her. And I like, I like that she, she, it brings out, you know, um, the excitement in me as well. So I, I enjoy that. And um, yeah, the, the more, and, and it also, I think when I fight with just, it, it makes me more alert and I'm more aware. And so when I'm alert and aware, I'm like a cat and uh, I don't know, it's, it's really hard to catch a cat. So, uh -huh. so uh, yeah. <laughs> So last question, then, do you, do you feel like, you know, she's aggressive and she she admits one of her problems is sometimes she's too aggressive to a fall, right? And her mm -hmm. goes away from the game plan. Do you think that's something you can use against her? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very experienced and I've, I've been in there, uh, in all kinds of situations. And so I've been able to, you know, and I've, I've also made mistakes myself, but I also really know how to capitalize on mistakes. And I think that's what, you know, kind of separates us. Um, cause I think, what what she is really good at is her heart and determination and her energy. I mean, she's a very she's she's got a very strong um, personality. So yeah. her will and determination is is great, and I love that. Um, but uh, you know, I think it's just being. I I just I believe in my my calculations are just more precise than hers. I believe so. Um, so I think that's all going to factor into it. And my spirit is very strong as well. And I think that uh you know, um, that's, that's going to show. Awesome. For sure. Well, Rose, yeah. we appreciate you Saturday, UFC Vegas, 89 over at apex. You were in the main event against Amanda Hibas. We will look forward to seeing you Rose. Always good to talk to you. Best of luck. And I can't wait to uh, see you Saturday. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm excited. Oh. <laughs>